in this video, we're going to look at properties. You might remember from the first video, the second argument you pass to a react.create element, I mentioned it was the props. Well, this is what we're going to look at in this video. Let's go ahead and go into our index.html. As usual, I've got the React, the React DOM, and Babel all included. I'm going to go and go ahead and create a React component again. I'm going to call this one second component. So if you remember, this is our display name. The display name is actually what React distinguishes each component as. You probably see a bit more of this uh, the more debugging you do. And of course, we are going to create a class, which, as you know, is a function that takes an object specification. Now, you obviously remember that React.create class has to implement a render method. Let's go ahead and do that. The function. And of course, the function has to return something. So let's just return. Let's just return a div. And a paragraph for now. Hello. Close that off. And let's go ahead and render this to the DOM. So as you remember, React DOM, of course, uses a render method. And of course, the first argument we pass into the React DOM method is the component we are rendering. So using the display name of the component, which is second component, we can render that to the DOM. And let's select the DOM element we are going to render it to, which is of course the div with the ID of app. So get element by ID and pass in app. This should all be fairly familiar with you by now. Of course, we're rendering this component here, which is a React component used to create class. And it simply renders a div with hello. And we pass that into the div with the ID of app. I'm just going to go ahead and open this up, check we haven't got any errors. Oh, and it looks like we do. So, Reacto DOM. Oh, I've got a typo there. So, as you see, we all make mistakes. So, there we go. Run it to the DOM. Using properties, also known as props, we can pass value and data into our components. This is really simple to do. Let's go ahead and show you now. So I'm just going to use curly braces, which allow us to render things in JSX. So we can render text, we can do functions, we can do logic inside of these, which is really, really useful. Now, we're actually going to pass in a property called name to this component. And you can access these using this.props. So this.props.name. This might seem a bit confusing at first, but as we go through, you'll definitely start to understand this. So this means that this component is going to have properties. And one of those properties is going to be name. Now, actually, all components have properties, whether you define them or not. And the way you pass properties into a component is declaring them on the component where it's called. So we're actually calling the component here. This is where we're passing it into the app. So all we need to do is pass the name property into that component, and it will get rendered in the component itself. Hopefully that makes sense. So as you can see, we're passing the name attribute, which is Tim in this case, to the second component. Go and look at the second component now, and we can see with inside it we're using this.props, 
which accesses the properties of the component and one of those properties is name so go ahead and save this let's look in the browser and we will see that my name has been rendered to the browser to the DOM so we can see here that this dot props is obviously an object on the component itself so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to console dot log this now for those of you that are not very familiar with this in this instance the keyword this represents the component and we'll see that in a second so go over to the browser and we've got this constructor logged out here and as we can see I'm just going to expand this a little bit as we can see we have a key of props which is an object and it has a key of name and it has my name in there Tim we can pass as many properties into a component as we want let's go ahead and pass another one inside so this time I'm going to define the property on the component first so I'm going to use the attribute location and Cambridge so this is the attribute the property that is going to get passed into the component let's go ahead and make a, another paragraph tag and say I live in and then this dot props because that's how we access properties that get passed in and of course it's going to be dot location because that's the name of the attribute that we're passing in exactly the same as before it's just a different name of the property save that and go on back over to the browser and there we go I live in Cambridge nice and simple have a look at the console.log again and we can see there's now two keys and two values on the props object now writing this dot props dot name of attribute is really really annoying because you might want to use Tim multiple times you might want to do certain things with it so we can actually use some ES6 now we're going to use the new keyword let and I'll explain a bit more about that in the next video I'll do a little aside about the let keyword but let basically replaces the keyword var ES6 and let basically limits the scope to the block statement or expression so in this case it's going to limit the let keyword is going to limit the variable into this block here into the render block I'll show you how it works now so rather than using var I'm going to use let so let name equal this dot props dot name let location equal this dot props dot location and now we can just pass in name and location without writing this dot props just tidies things up a little bit makes it a bit clearer and let's go ahead and save that and check it out in the browser and it should be exactly the same and it is now you don't have to do that it's just a preference I personally prefer to do that I think it looks cleaner and I personally quite like the keyword let which I'll talk about more in the next video now we can actually validate our properties we can say if we want a property to be a string if we want it to be a function and an array this just helps us make sure that our components are being used correctly now validating props is done using prop types now this only occurs during development mode but it's really useful to check that your components are being used correctly and are working correctly now the way we do this is in our component we define prop types and it's just simply 
an object that takes the key, the name of the attribute they're passing in. So this will be name, and then we'll have another one of location. So the keys of the props type object is always the name of the property, the attribute that gets passed into the component. So name and location. And then we use react.prop types. Notice the camel case here. And then the type of data we want. So we want this to be a string. Let's go ahead and do the same for location. So location is the attribute name, it's the property name, and it's going to be location on the prop types. So react.prop types. Don't forget the camel case. And we're going to make that one a string as well. And we can actually say we need a prop type to be required. So what we can do is we can use is required. Now if location is not passed in, this will throw an error. Let's go ahead and save this. One thing to notice before we save it and go to the browser is that when you create a class, you need to have a comma between each method. Otherwise, you'll throw an error. I'll just show you what that error actually looks like, just so you can see. Something you run into all the time. So yeah, you'll get a syntax error, unexpected token, line six, seven. So that's going to be about there. Obviously, we're missing a comma. Put that comma in, and it's going to work. Now, we're not getting any errors or anything because the prop types are correct. Now, if I was to remove location, we're now going to get an error because location is required by the prop types. Let's check that out. And we get a warning. Failed prop type. Required prop type location was not specified in second component. So you can see here that React tells the name through the display name of the component, which makes it really easy to debug and work out what's going on. So if we had a million components, for example, we could still know that it was the second component or whatever name you used that was throwing the error. So obviously if we undo that and pass in location, it's gonna work fine. Let's say that my name is gonna be a number. It's gonna throw an error again. Let's check that out. And there we go. Wrong type. So invalid prop name of type string supplied to second component expected number, which is really good. So it gives you clear precise and concise error messages. Now, as I mentioned, this will only occur during development mode. So when you actually have your app in production, this won't occur. So you won't get error messages on the client's browser, which is great. So if things do go wrong, you won't get an error message, which is brilliant. So I'm gonna go ahead and revert that. And I'm gonna make that one required as well, because I always wanna have my name in there. And that's it. Now, you can actually declare prop types outside of the class itself. So you can do second component dot prop types equals the object. Let's put a name, react prop types dot number. So it should throw an error. I'll just do one for now. Let's go to the browser. And there we go. Invalid prop type of type string to supply to second component expected number. So that's just a preference, whether you want to define them within the component or without or outside the component. I personally prefer to define them in the component, but it's up to you. Now with prop types and properties, we can actually define default properties. So if someone fails to supply the name attribute, we're obviously gonna get an error because it's a required property. So we can actually define default properties. 
And we do that using get default props. Get default props is a class method. So we define it like so. And get default props is simply a function that returns an object. Now, don't forget your comma after get default props. Now, we're going to return an object. And this object contains the key of the property we want to default if it's not supplied to the component and the value for that property. So in our case, it's going to be name. That's the key of the property. And then the value, I'm going to go Peter. And now when we fail to supply a name attribute, let's go ahead and delete my name. So second component is no longer being supplied a name attribute, a name property, only got location. And of course, due to our prop types, name is a required property. It should default to Peter. Let's save that and check it out in the browser. And there we go. Hello, Peter. I live in Cambridge. So we can do that with location as well. Let's say location, location is New York. And let's not supply a location now. Save that and check it out in the browser. And there we go. I live in New York. When using get default props, if we supply a property of the same name, in our default props method, it will simply override it. So if we supply a name of Simon and a location of London, this will simply override the get default props. Let's check that out. And there we go. So we can see that using prop types, we can require certain properties. We can make sure that our properties are of a certain type. Now, remember that prop types only works during development mode, so it doesn't work during production mode. And of course, using get default props, we can define default properties on our components. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you've got any comments, suggestions, or ideas for videos, leave them in the comments below, send me a tweet at Code with Tim, or send me an email, codewithtim at gmail.com.